So apparently it leaked out that we were doing a rifle cleaning video today. When I got to the studio, this was waiting for me. How's it going guys? I'm Wes. Today we are going to be cleaning this AR pistol. Um, this is actually one of my personal firearms. I built it mostly with BDU house parts with a couple upgrades like the law folder, Geisley trigger, a couple fun things like that. But let's go ahead and get started. So when you are going to be cleaning your AR, you are going to need a cleaning kit, some solvent or some oil cleaner, some good lubricant and like a rag or something to wipe wipe with. I like using like a cut up t-shirt, something cotton. Um, I do have a washcloth today. This isn't ideal for cleaning because it can get a little ratty. I don't like paper towels or q-tips or anything like that because they just kind of leave that residue everywhere. So first off, when you are going to be doing anything with a firearm, always make sure it is clear. You want to check the chamber. It's good to check it twice because two is one, one is none. Once you are sure that your firearm is clear, you want to go ahead and separate the upper from the lower. When you have a law folder, there is an extra step of taking out the BCG extension, or I guess it's the buffer extension. Once that is out to break down your upper, there are these two pins on either side. You should be able to press them out with just your fingers. If you need to use a punch or use a a 5.56 five, round or something just to get them started. That's all right. Then you can go ahead and pull these pins up and your upper and your lower should separate. We're going to go ahead and set the lower off to the side for now and just focus on the upper. When you do have your upper separated, next thing you're going to do is take out your BCG or the bolt carrier group. So you are going to pull out your charging handle and the BCG should just lift right out of that and then your charging handle you can't just pull it straight out the back of the rifle you do have to get it to a point where it stops then lift up and it comes right out and that's basically a stripped upper you know taking off the dust flap or the forward assist or anything like that really not necessary for what we're doing today so you can set that aside the most complicated part of cleaning an ar is going to be breaking down your bcg cleaning all of out and reassembling it, but it's really not a difficult process. I found it a little daunting when I was first getting into firearms, but it's not, it's not that many parts. And once you see it done, once you've done it yourself, once it's really a fairly simple process. So on your BCG, there's going to be a little cotter pin right here. You need to take a punch or anything that's fairly small and just kind of pry that pin out. So that pulls straight out. You wanna make sure not to lose any parts. So if you do have a tech mat or something you can lay down to make sure everything kind of stays together. Once that is out, your firing pin is going to drop right out the bottom. And then over here on the side, this is your cam. So you're going to rotate that 90 degrees and it will slide right out. Once that is out, your bolt should pop right out. You don't need to break your bolt down any farther than this on a regular clean. Um, we'll go ahead and break it down further today so you can see how to do it. But if you're just cleaning after a range day, this is going to be stripped enough for your cleaning. So on your actual bolt, there is a little retaining pin on the side there, which you will just press out. If you don't have a punch, you can also take your firing pin and use that just to push this little pin out. So it can be kind of tight, but just slowly work on it. You don't want to like bang it or anything like that, but you will get this little pin out. And once that pin is out, the actual extractor is going to pop out as well. Now your extractor does have a spring on it and a little rubber piece. You wanna make sure not to lose any of those parts. So be careful when you are taking this out. And now your BCG is fully broken down. There are, um, on your gas key, you don't wanna take this off. You wanna make sure it's nice and tight on there, but you definitely don't need to worry about breaking that down any further. 
Now that you have these parts broken down, you really just start cleaning. You take either a solvent or a cleaning oil in your rag, and you're wanting to get some cleaning oil on your rag. It doesn't need to be sopping wet. And just pick a part and start, start wiping it down. The whole point of this is just to get the bulk of the carbon buildup off of it. You're not taking your rifle to prom. You don't need it to be beautiful, but really you just wanna make sure that the extra buildup, the gunk, the carbon is completely broken down off of it. So you'll do that with every single part here. While you're cleaning, you should be inspecting these parts as well. Make sure nothing's bent, nothing's chipped, cracked. Um, you know, things like these little cotter pins can start getting kind of bent and out of shape as you do this more and more. So you wanna keep an eye out for any of those things. If you do have any parts that are iffy, I definitely recommend you take them to your local gun shop, you show them to the people there and say, hey, I'm, I'm new to this, I'm not sure, can you tell me if this is okay? Um, and they will let you know if you need to replace it or if it's okay to keep using, but you definitely don't ever want to you know, put parts back into a rifle that are malfunctioning or that aren't you know, fully operational because that can get dangerous. If you notice any parts of the group that are particularly dirty or you can't get to, you can get a soft brush and just really get in there and scrub out any of that extra carbon buildup. And again, look for spots where carbon is building up, where it's caked on. You know, you, you should be able to tell in most parts where they are dirty, but especially, you know, in the grooves right down here in the firing pin, you get a lot of buildup that over time can cause your rifle to jam, to malfunction, to not fire. Um, also, it's important to know that I'm just using like a gun oil cleaner today. If you are using like a true solvent, um, that can be corrosive and you're gonna wanna make sure that once you've got everything clean, you go back and you wipe all the solvent off the pieces and then go ahead and re-lube them with an oil or a grease to make sure that um, that solvent is completely gone. It doesn't cause any further corrosion on your firearm. And that grease will also help protect it from any moisture that might get in there and could potentially cause rust or issues in the future. So again, with the bolt, you're just looking at all the cracks and crevices, any little uh, tiny crease in there where carbon may build up. You'll get your brush, get into all those hard to reach places. Don't forget as you're going along, look for things that just don't look right. Even if you don't know exactly what you're looking at, it can be fairly apparent if you say, ooh, that does not look like what it's supposed to. Take it into your gun shop, have them take a look at it. On the bolt, you also kind of want to get in between each of these fins on the end. Make sure you're cleaning out in between them. These are definitely make sure all of these are uniform, nothing's broken. And there's no like unnatural wear on one piece. And then once each of those smaller pieces are clean, you'll go ahead to your actual carrier group. And again, get a rag, get some cleaner on it, pick a spot and just start scrubbing away. Well, again, these don't need to be perfect. You do want to pretty much wipe down the entire thing, make sure there's no buildup, get inside of it. Um, if you need to like stick your rag down inside and kind of push it through. Every person I've ever cleaned guns with has a slightly different way that they do all of this. So you just need to find what works best for you. These grooves at the bottom of the carrier group are another important place to make sure that you get all the gunk out of because that's where metal is connecting and moving when the gun is firing. So you want those areas to be as clean as possible. If you are using a solvent to clean your guns, you'll typically want to go ahead and clean everything, wipe all the solvent off, and then start oiling all the parts so that you're going from solvent to clean, to oil, to lube. Because again, I'm just using a cleaning oil, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble my bolt carrier group now because I am more worried about losing all of these little tiny pieces. So when you put it back together, it's basically reverse order of taking it apart. So you'll start by taking your bolt and the extractor 
and you'll drop that in, making sure again that little spring on the end is still intact. You are going to need to apply some pressure onto that spring to get these holes to line up in the side here. And then you'll take that pin that we popped out earlier and you will just pressure fit that right back into place, making sure that it's flush on both sides. Now, once that's back in there, we can go ahead and reinsert the bolt into the bolt carrier group. It may take a little bit of pressure. Now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is rotated so that there, you can see that hole where your cam inserts. Your extractor is kinda of gonna be up over here at like two, three o'clock. You'll go ahead and reinsert your cam, give it a twist. And then once that's back in place, you can go ahead and reinsert your firing pin. That drops back into place and you'll take your cotter pin and you can just add manual pressure to pop that back in. So now our BCG is clean. We'll go ahead and set that aside for now. On the rest of your upper, you don't need to break this down any further, take the barrel off or anything, but you do want to clean out the inside of this receiver. So we'll go ahead and we'll take our rag, get a little bit more oil cleaner on there and just start scrubbing out the insides the best you can. You can also take your brush, put some cleaner on the inside there and brush off any, any and as much carbon buildup as you possibly can. All right, so moving on to cleaning the barrel out. There's a couple different techniques and equipment you can use. You can use a bore snake. They have like these cables that you can use. I personally like using the metal bars because you have a nice T-handle at the end to pull it through. Um, see what works for you. It just can really suck to get these things stuck in your barrel. So you get these little brass tip here. Um, I like to start by adding some of my oil cleaner or solvent, whatever you're using to clean out your barrel. Um, I start by getting the barrel nice and wet just to help start breaking down and loosening up that carbon before we start running brushes through it. Whenever you're running anything through your barrel, you always want to go back to front. That is how barrels were designed to be used. So you never want to shove anything up from the front. So once that pad is in there, I'll give it a few spins at the top just to kind of get it going, make sure that oil is all the way around um, and well distributed. I will attach my T-handle and then just pull it through. This may take a little bit of force, so don't be afraid to really put your back into it. Um, but that'll pull all the way through. You'll see it's going to start getting some of that carbon buildup off. So once you have some oil in your barrel, you've started breaking down that carbon, you'll go ahead and take one of your metal brushes and you will run that through the same way. Again, if it's a little bit tough to pull through, you can get something with a T-handle and that'll just make it a lot easier for you to get a better grip on there. And you'll just go ahead and pull that through. I typically like to run these through two or three times depending on how dirty your barrel really is just to make sure that you've really gotten all the carbon out of there. And then once you've gotten the metal brush through a few times, you'll go back to your paper pads and you're just gonna now go through and wipe up all of that carbon that you've loosened with the metal brush and the solvent. Again, just like with the BCG, you'll wanna just go through with some oil afterwards and wipe everything down, protect it from any moisture, because um, you definitely don't want any part of your firearm getting moist. The last part of your upper that we'll need to clean is your charging handle. This is pretty simple. You really just need to wipe it down, get any gunk off of it, get inside that groove at the back. If it is really dirty, you can get your brush and just kind of give it a really quick light brush out and now that your whole upper assembly is clean, we can move on to cleaning the lower assembly. So first we'll go ahead and take out the buffer and the buffer spring. So there's a little detent pin here in the back. You can use something like your charging handle or a 
you know, any tool you have to just push that detent down, which is going to release the buffer and the buffer spring. And you can just pull those out. You're going to get a little um, resistance from that tab there, but you can just pull the spring straight out. These shouldn't get incredibly dirty, but it is good just to take a look at them, make sure that everything is still, you know, isn't too marred. You're going to get a little bit of marring on the end of your buffer here from your um, bolt carrier group striking against it, but you want to make sure that nothing else looks too out of place. And then we'll just get our oil and just kind of wipe this down really quick. Make sure that nothing is too dirty. There's no carbon buildup on it. And again, because we're using a gun cleaning oil, this does kind of just lubricate it and help protect the longevity of this spring. You're also going to want to remove the buffer from the spring. It may take a little bit of force. Again, just give it a really cursory inspection. Make sure that this roll pin is still flush. Give it a good wipe down. And then you're able just to stick this right back inside. And you don't need to worry about that detent. Just push it back in there. And your buffer tube is all cleaned out. With your lower, you can just break down your entire trigger control group, pull everything out of here and clean those really thoroughly. There is a little bit of different schools of thought on how much wear and tear that adds to those pieces. If it's worth it to do that to the springs, taking them out, reassembling them, how often you should do that. So you want to give everything a good wipe down. If there is any carbon buildup, go ahead and take it out. Use the brush if you need to. It is good to add lubricant anywhere you have metal rubbing against other metal, but I definitely don't recommend dumping a bunch of lube down inside the trigger control group because that can lead to malfunctions. It can lead to it not catching properly and more issues further on. So if you have any areas where you see wear and tear or you have metal contacting metal, you can lubricate it a little bit, but for the most part, not much in your lower actually needs to be lubricated. So I'm going to go ahead and call this firearm clean. We are ready to go ahead and start reassembling. As you reassemble these pieces, you do want to lubricate them as you go. Just look for wear and tear, look for spots where you have metal contacting metal, and that's where you want to add your lubricant. So typically with your charging handle, it may help to add just a little bit of lubricant on there. Um, things like this Lucas oil where you have this needle tip is really nice to add just a little bit of lubricant at a time. Anywhere you, where you see metal interacting with metal, you see you know, wear and tear on these parts. And then you'll insert this charging handle. Um, there's a spot where it's going to just drop down in there. So when you reinsert it into the upper, um, you'll feel it drop down into place. And that's where you can go in. From there, your bolt carrier group. The real parts where you want to lubricate on here are these rails. That is where it's sliding against the rest of the firearm. So you want to add some lubricant right in there. It also doesn't hurt to add a little bit of lubricant to the bolt as well, as well as these little holes in the side, just to make sure that that bolt is going to slide nice and smoothly inside your rifle. Before you can insert your bolt carrier group back into the upper, you do need to make sure that the bolt is forward. So you can either pull it forward. Again, that's good to make sure everything's lubricated. If it's kind of stuck, you can, you know, give it a sling and that may help move that forward. And then you can go ahead and drop that into your charging handle. You're going to want to make sure that your gas key is facing the charging handle because that is what's going to drop into that groove. And once that's in, those parts can just slide right inside the upper and click. And then you'll just mate the upper with the lower and those pins should drop right back into place. Again, because I'm using the law folder, I do have this buffer extension that I have to drop back in as well for the firearm to function. And we're all good to go. It's always good to check your firearms, make sure everything is still functioning after you clean it. So check to make sure it's clear. I know we just cleaned it. I know it's clear. Anytime you're going to pull the trigger on your firearm, you should check it, make sure it's clear. You just always check it. 
So check to make sure it's clear. Go ahead, point the firearm in a safe direction. Pull the trigger. Hold the trigger down when you charge it again. Feel the release and that firearm is functioning properly. We have done a full video on how often you should clean your firearms, what you should use to clean your firearms. I definitely recommend that you click the card up above me, watch that video as well. If you need any accessories for your firearm, if you need cleaning kits, oil, any of that, we do have it available at bigdaddyunlimited.com. There will be a pinned comment down below. Follow that link, it's only 99 cents for your first month if you're not a member already. And you guys have a great day and stay safe.